This is day five out of day six out of President Xi Jinping's tour around Europe. Obviously, he did start off in Rome and then passed through Palermo, of all places. Monaco yesterday, south of France, for a quick dinner with President Macron and his wife. Today, they will start their official state meeting at the Elysee Palace in a few hours' time and also have a dinner with business leaders. Now, the reception from Paris is a little bit more measured compared to the one that we got out of Rome. Of course, their uh, rather warm embrace uh, was really what set off uh, the EU policymakers' comments, as we heard, many people quite uncomfortable with what has transpired here. So, uh, just to reiterate what happened on Saturday, Italy became the first G7 industrialized nation to officially endorse China's Belt Road Initiative. There was a signing ceremony that took place between President Xi Jinping, Prime Minister Conte in Italy, and also with Deputy Prime Minister Luigi De Maio. Interestingly enough, though, Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini was not present. We'll talk about that shortly. But at the end, they uh, signed about uh, 29 deals that covered various investment projects, whether it was an aerospace sector, cultural ties, the banking sector, agricultural goods. Also, crucially, and this is a bit of a strategic one, uh, pledging further cooperation and access to the Chinese for their two ports, Port Tieste and also on the Genoa, uh, the Gen Genoa port as well. Key, key ports uh, to give access to China when it comes to the continent. Now, I had the chance to sit down with the Deputy Prime Minister Luigi De Maio, as I mentioned. He was at the signing ceremony on Saturday. And I asked him whether there was something else that was discussed and whether or not the Italians had talked about that thorn any subject of BTPs and considering uh, whether or not China would perhaps become a new investor in their local bond market, given the volatility we saw in that space last year. Let's take a listen. We are not on this level of dialogue. The Minister of Economy has, in the past, had some public discussions with the Chinese government about investments, broadly speaking, as well as financial investments. But all the agreements that we are about to sign are based on the possibility of Made in Italy to go to China, for our companies to export to China after many years where Made in China has been coming to Italy. We are reversing the trend and rebalancing our trade flows, but there isn't any intent on making any pacts on financial support relating to goods, to the Treasury or to government bonds. We are not looking to ask China for help with our government bonds. Instead, we are looking to advance our own agenda and create more jobs in Italy by increasing our exports to China. I thought it would be a question worth asking, given the China actually hold about $1 trillion worth of U.S. Treasuries. Maybe they'll be looking for a new place uh, to put them, given what's been happening with the China and the U.S. But crucially, as I said earlier, Matteo Salvini, the other deputy prime minister, was not there at the signing ceremony because he had deep reservations about what was going down. He said that if there, is, if there were to be a trade between the two sides, it has to be reciprocal. Which led me to my next question to uh, Deputy Prime Minister Di Maio, and I said to him, look, you've dropped a lot since the polls since one year ago. We had the general election. You're down about 10 percentage points. This isn't voting well at all for the European elections coming up in May. What do you say to that? Let's take a listen. I don't think the European elections will have any effect on the Italian government for a simple reason. The European elections are European elections. They are not won with an Italian vote, but instead are won with the European vote, where the 51% will not be reached by the EEP and the PSA, the two traditional European parties. In this scenario, we, as the Five Star Movement, are creating a new parliamentary group of alternative movements that are neither from the left or the right, outside even of the European right-wing parties, to hold the balance of power in the European Parliament. The work that we are doing aims to achieve a European result and overpower the traditional parties, that have cultivated austerity policies and compromised the European economy. How would you say your relationship is with the Deputy Prime Minister Salvini at this point? And would you stay in the coalition at any cost to your party? At any cost, as long as it is for the Italian people. This is a government that has simplified the Italian political landscape because for the first time it is a government that has two political forces and no longer five or six different forces at once. This has allowed us to do a series of reforms that are now bearing fruit. The spread is now at 238 points, which is one of the lowest points since this government took over. The export indices are over 2.7%, industrial production is at 1.7% and permanent employment contracts as a result of the Dignity Decree reform have brought a 100% increase from temporary to permanent contracts without falling employment. 
So, I would do it at any cost, as long as they are done for the Italian people. And my relationship with Salvini and the Liga, we are two different political forces. We have different views on many points, energy, environment, but government contracts are the point on which we agree, and that will be enough to enable us to realise many things in the coming four years. Then, we'll see. Since you brought up the spreads, I'm going to ask you about the economy. Italy, Italy is technically in a recession now, two consecutive quarters of negative growth, and the performance was much worse than any other country in the Eurozone last year. Do you accept that there, you should take some responsibility because of the political upheaval that happened for many months during the course of 2018 that impacted investment, also impacted sentiment as well? Two factors have been affecting the Italian economy. Firstly, the tensions between the US and China have reduced our export opportunities, and consequently we are looking towards new markets precisely to raise our export capacity, because our production, our GDP, has receded a lot from this decline in exports. And the second point is that Germany's industrial production has halted, and from this slowdown in Germany's industrial production, we have been greatly affected domestically in various sectors, like that of the autos industry. Today we are focused on two important measures. The first is the Unblock Italy decree, which will unblock work sites that were weighed down by bureaucracy, a consequence of previous governments. And the second is a legal measure, which will allow many more companies to come and invest in Italy, and for existing ones to take advantage of new instruments for investments and the development of their business plan. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.